Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is video tip 621, and I'm continuing here making a series of videos on making index or dividing plates for index heads and so on by many different methods, perhaps four different methods. In the previous videos, I cut out these plates at the high school and that's kind of a good video go back and watch that if you haven't seen it so that's how I'm coming up with the blanks for this project I recently purchased at public auction this dividing head that is meant to be used on a lathe now I've never seen one for a lathe before and in a, a previous video you, you saw me purchasing this and it's made by the master manufacturing company it must be fairly old but there was only one plate included with it now I'm sure that there were three or four plates initially and in a previous uh, video I mentioned that uh, I'm going to do a project with this and videos with this but I need another plate in order to uh, do that job so I'm going to make some plates again by these different methods that you may find interesting now no one in the free world is going to need to make plates like this but this is uh, fairly interesting and you may, may need to at some time in your life make whole circles different numbers of holes at different diameters so this will apply to you not just to these dividing head plates Ultimately, what I'm going to do with this dividing head is uh, make the graduations on this teaching aid. So that will be 25 graduations in a full revolution, 360 degrees. But I'm trying to think of other reasons for using this because I've never seen one before. But I do know that it could be used on a lathe, perhaps on a submarine or a small ship or something where they did not have a complete machine shop, but they had a lathe and they had various attachments, including this attachment here, which they call a lathe converter. But this is a powered attachment that would hold a cutter. And then uh, this, this would do the cutting and the lathe would allow you to index the gear or whatever it is you're working on. I know these aren't good pictures, they're just on my phone and this is information that I found on the internet. But here is a device sold by the same company. I recognize that trademark and there is the dividing head in question here and apparently they sold this in a kit. So that's perhaps why there isn't a complete set of indexing plates for it. But there you see uh, an attachment. I'm not sure just what it does, but there's that milling attachment as well. And in this picture, you can see that there is the dividing head, and there is what I think a pile of plates, two or three of the plates. Now, I know these are bad pictures off of my computer, but here I am at the auction, and they're selling a Bridgeport mill, but right below it there are some attachments. Now take a quick look because this is rather short here, but there they are selling a Versa mill with the manual. I wish I would have bought it, but possibly the plates went with that package deal that you see on the floor. Video tip 609 is the auction that I attended where I bought this dividing head. I know that was a very awkward introduction to the video with some bad footage, but I'm trying to lay out exactly what it is that I'm doing here. So today I'm going to make a plate for this dividing head, not this one. This is my hardinge, and there is a full set of plates for this, four plates. Now in a later video I'm going to show you how to make some of these plates even though I have a full set and these blanks here are quarter inch thick and really are for this project I will not be using those today these blanks are 3 16 thick and that is what I'm going to use they are rough cut on the plasma cutter even the hole is rough cut and needs to be enlarged bored to inch and a quarter so now why are there two different sizes? Mainly to show you here that it is not necessary always to have it. 
the exact size of what we have right here and although it is on this one because there is a rim so these have to be the exact size in order to fit on this dividing head let me set this aside because we're not going to use that today so what I need to do is make a dividing plate that has 15 holes for the project that I'm going to do now that's an odd number not an even number is what I meant and what I'm going to do is to make it by the simplest method and that is I'm just going to transfer the holes now this is a hardened plate and notice if we can find the original numbers here, where are they? Right here. The inner circle of holes is 15. So I'm just going to transfer them with a transfer punch. Now that also could be done on a dividing head or a rotary table or by the coordinate method and those methods will be covered in later videos. Remember Keith Rucker has a nice video on this subject as well. Well, what are you going to do if you do not have a plate to transfer them off? Well, possibly you could borrow one from a friend or a shop, although they'll be very hesitant to loan these out because they can't be replaced. But uh, that would be the very simplest method and how accurate it is eh, depends on your own working ability and skill level but I think it's going to be accurate enough certainly for what I'm going to do now this has a 40 to 1 ratio although I've shown it in the other video I think there's going to be some of you are that are going to say what does a dividing head for a lathe do well it attaches into the spindle and this expands and then it allows you to rotate the spindle of the lathe in very accurate increments or in other words dividing the circle you do not use the lathe under power you unplug the lathe when you use this or this would come around and kill you all right let me take this dividing plate off so you can see how it is it is mounted and you would have to do this every time you change plates so take the acorn nut off and a washer and then the crank handle with the plunger spring-loaded and then there is a spring-loaded retaining clip that goes into a groove and we'll take this screw off I call this the spider or the sector or whatever it is I don't know what the correct name is but you see these parts come off like that and then I'll take these three screws out and then the plate comes off now at first I thought well I can use the hardened plate because it's the, it's the right size hole but the whole circle on these three mounting screws is not the same nor is the thickness of the plate the same so I was really disappointed because I thought I I, uh, I had an easy solution but you know there is no easy solution now on this particular dividing head a piece of square stock could be used it doesn't have to be round it would look awkward and you'd cut your self on the corners but there is no reason for it necessarily to be round unless of course you want to hold it in the lathe easily in a three jaw chuck this plate obviously is just one of a series because this one has whole circles from 21 23 27 29 31 and 33 and then the next plate would continue and there would be probably another smaller plate like this so the next thing I'm going to do is prepare the blank and of course I could use this and make it the exact same diameter turn it, turning it down in the lathe but just to show you that the diameter doesn't really matter I'm going to use the smaller one because you can see that on the hardened plate this size will easily accommodate the inner circle first thing I will do is knock off the slag and just clean it up a little bit 
I don't believe I'm going to turn this to diameter because it's a fairly good finish to start and that is irrelevant for my purposes. And this slag can easily be knocked off with a cold chisel or a hammer. And then I'll just clean it a little bit on the bell sander. And be right back. Well, the diameter here measures about one and one eighth. So I've already cleaned one of these up and I ran a boring bar through there on the lathe just enough to bring the hole back into concentricity because it was a little bit rough. And I ran an inch and an eighth drill bit uh, through there. I'll show you that. And uh, that gave me a pretty good size, a little bit oversized, but that's going to be okay for what we're doing here. Boy, is that a nice fit considering it's just drilled rather than reamed or bored. So that's just going to be perfect. Now next I will transfer these three holes onto the plate and drill them. And then of course they have to be countersunk as well. I had to clean those holes out a little bit with a one-fourth tap. I like to install the transfer screws so they just barely protrude the surface. I implore you, buy yourself hundreds of tools so you have one of every tool ever known to mankind. Now let's transfer these. And rather than tap it all the way around and only have one or two hit, I'm just going to put a, a sleeve over here and just give it a nice whack. Look at that. Just like downtown. All right, drilled and countersunk and ready to... Well, this isn't the final installation, but let's see how it fits up. fits just nice. Now these screws have to be flush or a little bit below or they'll interfere with the spider. Alright, that's good. Now I can take it off and do the important part which is drill some index holes. The pin on the plunger here, the indexing pin, is in fact 124, 123 and a half. So let's call it eighth inch. This is an eighth inch bit. And this is the master. This is not the uh, hardinge. This is the hardinge. And the holes in the hardinge are a little smaller. But my point being, I want to drill the holes in this piece one eighth but I will have to use a smaller transfer punch from my number set. This transferring could very well be done with the plate on here. Matter of fact, that would be a good idea, but since I took it off, I'll just show you another way that this is a piece of inch and an eighth stock to line up the big holes, and I've got it clamped. Now, this is the only time when I wish I had used the larger plate because I would have had more clamping surface. The way it is, this has to hang over the edge just a little bit here of my bench block. Now I'm ready to transfer. And yes, this could all be done in a matter of minutes on a CNC machine, but I do not have a CNC machine. And of course they certainly didn't back in the olden days when they made these plates. I, I'm kind of wondering how they did it because to, to make a drill jig would have been an awful lot of work for them as well. Well, I will start here. Remember, this is the inner circle. I'm doing 15 holes. I'll start right there and work my way around with this little transfer punch. I won't show all of it.
and that's 15. Let's see what it looks like. I know they'll be pretty faint. Now I'm going to deepen them just a little bit with another punch. I think I'll use this little steric punch. have to be very careful when you're deepening them that your punch is perpendicular and not at an angle where you might move the center punch hole. Even 15 was a lot of work. Imagine doing one with 60 or more holes. and so on. I think that most of you know that before committing myself to the final size I often like to use the Cameron micro drill press to deepen those. Now I'm not going to go all the way through because this is just a sixteenth inch bit but I like to go in just a little bit maybe a one-third of the way through or so to establish the hole then when I go to drill the eighth inch hole it isn't going to wander, it isn't going to move. I missed one, I gotta go back. Looking pretty good to knock off all the burrs and possibly just countersink very lightly from both sides as such. Then run the file over it again. Notice how I have a tack in there so it won't roll off the bench. Everything else rolls off this bench, it's not level. <laughs> I'm sure glad I'm not making a plate with this many holes. Just 15 and the plunger pin fits in just fine. So this is essentially done and ready to mount onto the dividing head. I know it's a poor man's way, a cheap way to do this by just transferring it, but it's going to be plenty accurate for what I'm going to do. And I haven't talked yet about all the math involved. That'll be in a later video. Sometimes I think I explain too many things, but it, the diameter of the circle, the whole circle, does not really matter. So what I've done here to illustrate that is to transfer these 15 holes on one of the larger plates which I have also bored out to show you that uh, we can put it uh, that uh, circle just about at any diameter or radius that we want to. Let me uh, carry that one step farther. Alright, I will scribe another circle be concentric and it could be any diameter like that. Now the only reason they have the holes on the different uh, diameter of whole circles is to accommodate all of these and sometimes the plates are much larger and they've done it in sequence just for spacing and economy. I know you British fans out there love your Moore and Wright products, but then again so do I, but we seldom see them. But this is a center finder. You don't see that kind very often. Now this is pretty inaccurate, but I'm just doing it for an illustration. So this is coming up against this aluminum piece like that. And I'm lining it up with one of the center punch marks. Now since this is not setting flat, we're losing a lot of our accuracy, but what I'm doing here is I'm just extending these lines out through the previous holes. Like that. Let me go all the way around off camera and do that. I got a little sloppy there, but this is just to illustrate that it doesn't matter what the radius or the diameter of the circle is. However, you'll see that there is a greater space between them as we get larger, but yet we're still spacing the circle 
or we divided the circle, I should say, into 15 parts. Well, this is just scrap for the fun of it. These are eighth inch dowel pins. Now they're going to fit in there a little loose because I didn't ream these holes. But let me go ahead and fit one into each hole here. And we'll just have a, a, a real quick check to see how accurately they are spaced. And I don't expect them to be perfect. They can't be by the method that I did it. Alright, let's see how accurate this is. I think I'm going to go by the inside here and rock it. Got about 468 or 9 there. 478. Four seventy. One pin fell out. Four fifty nine. You can see they're all over the place. They're not very accurate at all. But was I the culprit? Was I inaccurate? Well, let's check some of the originals and see how accurate they are. Now this is the master plate three sixteen that was on the lathe dividing head. This is fairly accurate. And there's one that's below. But you can see they are not perfect. Even the factory made ones. Now let's take a look at the hardens. And this is the one that I copied and we think of a hardinge as being perfect. Now the eighth inch dowel pins will not fit in these holes. They're a little bit undersized, but I do have some number 36 drill bits that I can stick in there that will be a fairly good fit. But they're going to wobble just a bit. Alright, this is the hardinge, and as you can see, some of these are going to wobble a little bit because some of the holes are worn, or maybe they didn't drill them that accurately. So here we've got Oh, about 490, 498, but one of those is moving a little bit. 497, 494, 494 and 500. So they're not perfect by any means, are they? And that kind of surprises me. But then again, you know, these were made 70 years ago, and we're not sure just how they were made. I think this was made during the war, probably even some semi-skilled workers. Well, who knows? I'm just uh, guessing at some of that. But the fact that the originals aren't perfect, of course, translates into the fact that my copied one here isn't perfect. But yet, what couple that with the 40 to 1 ratio here, there's probably not going to be a lot of inaccuracy in the final product that is being manufactured with this. That make any sense to you? Is that clear as mud? All right, let's get this thing reassembled, but I believe I'll clean this up a little bit. It's got decades worth of corrosion and dirt. It looks kind of silly with these spiders sticking out in the middle of the air, doesn't it? That's really the only downside, I think, to the fact that I made it with a little plate instead of the normal size plate. But, I have a real good fit here with the pin into the holes. I've tried every one of them, so that's going to work just fine. 
Well, there you have it, making an index plate by the transfer method. The downside of that, again, you have to beg, borrow, or steal someone's plates to copy off of. But that may be a possibility. I'm just showing you different ways of doing it. This is ready for my demonstration that I will use all oh, six or eight videos from now. And in the next video, I want to show how to make one of these for the hardinge, or I could do it for this too. And I'll do that with a rotary table. We'll see how that works out. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now, and I'll see you next time, I hope.